All right, so in this video, what we're going to demonstrate is a recruitment maneuver, but it's not the traditional sustained pressure recruitment maneuver. This is one you can do with a patient that's not paralyzed, maybe under a lighter plane of anesthesia, but there's still atelectasis, you still need to recruit. This is a gentler way of doing the same thing, and you can control how high you go. So what we're going to start off, we're going to start ventilating the patient with a tidal volume of 400, respiratory rate of 12, no PEEP, and room air. So if you look at the lungs, there's a lot of atelectasis, which is the darker areas here. The lighter areas are aerated alveoli. So now I'm going to go to 5 of PEEP. So 5 of PEEP does eliminate some of the areas we just looked at. So there's some alleviation of atelectasis. So let's say we want to recruit this lung without allowing the patient to really notice what we're doing. So all we do is we go up by two to four on our PEEP in a stepwise fashion, keeping in mind our peak pressures. We don't want to drive our peak pressures too high. So if that starts to happen, you can cut down on the tidal volume to keep your peaks where you want them while still increasing the PEEP. So we're going to go up by two, so here's seven a peep. Peak pressures are at 20, so not bad. Visually, you can start to see the atelectasis resolve. And it usually takes about two to three breaths in between an adjustment and peep to actually start to recruit. It's because the peep is after the breath. So it takes a few breaths for that peep to get into those alveoli that the tidal volume recruited and then the peep stays in there to keep it from de-recruiting. Going up to 11. Peak pressures are still doing well, so I don't have to start turning my tidal volume down yet. And visually, the lungs are starting to smooth out, which is what you want. If you go too quickly, you're not going to allow enough time to recruit, and then you could go to the point of your peak pressures are now too high, and you could cause some type of barotrauma. And again, with every incremental increase in PEEP, my lungs start to look a little bit better. So if you look, we're at 15 a PEEP, tidal volume of 400, and we are still atelectatic. But our peak pressures are still good because PEEP eliminates atelectasis. Your tidal volume doesn't eliminate atelectasis. All your tidal volume does is cause cyclic atelectatic trauma which is a form of ventilator-associated lung injury. So let's go up a little bit higher. Let's go to 17. Now obviously, without using, say, spirometry or looking at your, your pressure versus volume ratio, which would give you your compliance, or if you have spirometry, looking at your pressure volume loop, this is kind of a, a, a guessing game. But the idea is your oxygenation should improve, you should be able to deliver more volume with less pressure. You can give them less oxygen and their saturation will stay the same. These are all ways of knowing you've recruited without actually having, say, spirometry there to visually see the elimination of atelect. Using a model like this, it's quite easy. But I just want to point out that we are on 17 a peep and a tidal volume of 400, and that's how much pressure and volume it's taking to eliminate some of the most compliant lungs there are. The only elastic force or resistance to inflation right now is the lung's own natural elastic property. So the tissue itself, that's the only thing. So in a normal patient, I have a diaphragm to push out. I have a whole chest wall to push out. If I have an insufflated belly, then I have the diaphragm and the pressure of the insufflated belly to push against. But just keep in mind that with all those things, you need more PEEP to balance out those other forces. And that's why using more PEEP, higher rates, and lower tidal volumes, we can achieve that. And remember, you can ventilate very easily in most people, but oxygenation becomes an issue. And PEEP, as well as FiO2, are your two main components for oxygenation. Your tidal volume and your rate are your main components for ventilation. And what you would do to back down out of this is go the exact same way you came up. You go up slow, you come back slow. And hopefully, if you've been able to wean your FiO2 
out to a lower level, now there's more nitrogen back in those alveoli to help keep them open, as well as recruitment breaths stimulate type 2 pneumocytes, which are the ones that make surfactant, to release surfactant. So without a recruitment breath, every now and then, your type 2 pneumocytes on a stagnant tidal volume, such as mechanical ventilation, they stop producing surfactant. So you induce with 100% oxygen, you cause atelectasis. You put them on a, a stagnant tidal volume, you stop producing surfactant. You insufflate the belly, then you force atelectasis. You took away their ability to hold their chest wall open, you cause atelectasis. Everything in anesthesia causes atelectasis when you're talking about a general anesthetic. The only thing that fights that is going to be PEEP and recruitment maneuvers. And using the least amount of oxygen you can. Because you need the nitrogen, you need the surfactant, and you need the PEEP. And without it, you're just going to have an atelectatic patient who requires more oxygen in the PACU, who's more at risk for pneumonia, who's more at risk for mucus plugging, who's more at risk of biotrauma. All these things can be prevented if we take the time to, to find the appropriate tidal volumes, the appropriate PEEP levels, and recruit periodically throughout the case.